Howdy everyone, and welcome to another of my weird lens reviews, and today I have another extreme mirror lens, the MTO 1000A 1100mm f10.5. It's essentially a catadioptric telescope with a camera mount on the end. A Russian lens from the Soviet era, manufactured back in the 80s, you can find these on eBay quite easily for less than £150 or $200. US dollars. This one has an M42 lens mount, so I've used an M42 to Canon EOS adapter to fix it onto my camera. The lens can focus way past infinity, so with the right adapter you could probably fix it to any camera at all. 1100mm Let's get a handle on the kind of magnification we're talking about here. Here's a scene shot on a full frame camera, with a standard zoom lens, zooming in to 105mm. Can you see the elevated nest in the distance? Well you certainly can with a 1100mm lens on your camera. Amazing! Here's another scene shot at 105mm. Can you see that farmhouse? Here it is a little closer, complete with some sheep. That's an angle of view of 2.5 degrees, so this really is a bit of a specialist lens. You'll definitely need a very sturdy tripod to get useful shots with this beast. Among other people, it's potentially of interest to astronomers. It gets nice shots of the moon, and some people have even used it to get blurry pictures of Jupiter. Another application is extreme portrait photography, if you're happy enough yelling your instructions to your subject. Here's a picture my wife took showing just how far away I was. Amazing. It could also be of use for getting pictures of slow moving wildlife. Being a manual focus lens, you'll need a bit of skill and patience to use it for that. Let's take a look at the build quality. The lens's body is made of metal, it's very solid indeed, and it weighs 3.5 kilograms, or about 8 pounds. It will dwarf any camera you put it on. You can see the mirrors inside through the front element. The lens has a built-in hood which extends like so. And it's a manual focus lens. The focus ring turns all the way around, about 340 degrees, very smoothly and precisely. You will need that level of precision to focus this thing properly. Thankfully, manual focusing is not too hard, especially if you're using live view on your camera. It's quite workable. The lens has a fixed aperture of f10.5, which means it really doesn't let in much light at all. About 15 times less light than an f2.8 lens. And it has a minimum focus distance of 10 meters, so this is most definitely an outdoors lens. You can forget handheld photography, simply to get a sharp picture you'll need to use a tripod, as your shutter speeds will be too slow for handheld shooting. And aside from anything else, the lens weighs too much even for a cheaper tripod to handle. Also, you really want to shoot in live view mode to get your focusing right. Thankfully, I have my Manfrotto video tripod, which did the trick very well indeed. But even with such a steady tripod, you'll need to get your shutter speeds up to at least around 1 200th of a second. Overall, the lens is as Russian and heavily built as Ivan Drago but it's quite usable in practice, especially with that quite precise focus ring. Let's take a look at image quality. How does a 30 year old Soviet Union 1100mm mirror lens from eBay perform on a modern digital SLR camera? Let's test it on a full frame camera first, my 20 megapixel Canon 6D. Surprisingly enough, the resolution is not too bad on a full frame camera, it's not a very sharp image and there isn't much contrast, but it's actually perfectly usable in the centre of the exposure. As we look into the corners we see some softness with a surprising amount of chromatic aberration. Mirror lenses are supposed to be more resistant to chromatic aberration by nature of their design, but I suppose we're dealing with quite an extreme lens in this case. Let's see how well the lens can do on a more difficult APS-C sensor, in this case on an 18 megapixel Canon 60D. It's clear that the smaller pixels on the APS-C sensor are pushing this lens's optics to the absolute limit. In the middle of the frame we're getting an image that's quite soft, but still just about usable. Again, we see low contrast levels. The corners of the image are softer, again with noticeable chromatic aberration. 
So on a full frame camera, I'm actually quite pleased with the image quality you can see. It's certainly not a very sharp lens, but the images are surprisingly usable. Owners of APS-C cameras will get less useful results, but still, a relatively clear image can make it through to the camera. Some good news about image quality is that, even on a full frame camera, we see no distortion and almost no vignetting. That's great to see. As I mentioned already, the minimum focus distance of the lens is 10 meters. I've come to notice that pictures taken at shorter distances are just a touch softer, but not in a really bad way. And if you use the lens hood, then lens flare from bright light never seems to be much of a problem. Something quite interesting in this lens, and in all mirror lenses, is the donut-shaped bokeh in the backgrounds and foregrounds. That comes due to the circular mirror design of the front element, and it's pretty ugly really, yet also oddly fascinating to look at. At the end of the day, if you're actually on the market for a 1100mm lens, then the MTO 1000A is a surprisingly acceptable performer optically. With a little practice, it can give quite usable results on a full frame camera. Something I should mention now is that the sample pictures and videos you've seen have had their colours corrected and a lot of contrast added in. The lens does give a bit of a strange green colour cast to its images. It's a difficult lens to use for a number of obvious reasons. It has a dark aperture and it's very big and heavy, especially considering you'll need to carry around a hefty tripod in order to use it properly. The hardest thing might simply be finding subjects to shoot, as they'll all have to be about half a mile away when you're dealing with such a tight focal length. And manual focus means that wildlife photography will take you some practice and skill. But I think I'll keep hold of this lens because using it is actually quite a fun little challenge, and it can genuinely yield good results. It's just about sharp enough for video work too. With some patience and a decent tripod, you can quite happily get some decent ultra telephoto shots with this Russian bad boy.